there's been a lot of Mortal Kombat games throughout the years. This series is older than me, and it's jam-packed with characters, some of them amazing and others not so much. So today, we answered the most important question of all. Which Mortal Kombat game has the best roster? Which game has the worst roster? Let's find out right now, starting off with the best games, the S tier. Right off the bat, I think we all know which Mortal Kombat game has the best roster, and it's Armageddon because come on, it has every single character in the series who's ever been playable in any way, shape, or form, including the spin-offs, including the handheld games. So yeah, every playable character in Mortal Kombat history is shoved into this game. Now with that said, yes, the gameplay does get a bit repetitive, lots of characters share stances from other characters from previous games, and overall, outside of special moves, everybody kinda has a similar gameplay function. I understand that. Keep in mind, this tier list is not about how good the games are. Once again, it's just about the roster. How many characters are in the game, and are those characters iconic and fun to play, or do those characters suck and everybody wanted them gone? Okay, so next up, right behind Armageddon, we have Mortal Kombat Trilogy. Very similar to Armageddon, this game had everybody. The only difference is, it's older, right? It came out way earlier, and as a result, the 3D era characters had not been created yet. And as a result, every character is there, but not the characters that came after, and that's why it's behind Armageddon. And for a fun fact, I'm pretty sure this Mortal Kombat game was the first time you could play as the boss characters. So Motaro, Shao Kahn, Goro, you get the idea. But next up, it's time for a more recent game that everybody loves and can't stop talking about till this day, and its name is Mortal Kombat 9, otherwise known as Mortal Kombat 2011. Pretty much nobody denies that this game has the best roster, especially when you include the DLC characters. Pretty much every fan favorite character is here from the original game, and also a couple of 3D era games for good measure, and you even got Scarlet, who became playable for the very first time in this game. And believe it or not, that's already it for S tier. Next up, we have the Iconic tier. The rosters in this game are also incredible, they're just not the best, but rest assured, people are going to be talking about these games for decades to come. First up, we have Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. This game was the savior of the series, because for anyone not aware, Mortal Kombat 3 the original was so bad that pretty much nobody wanted to play it and just went right over to the Mortal Kombat 2 arcade cabinet instead because that game had all their favorite characters. That's how terrible the roster was in Mortal Kombat 3, but then along came Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 that brought back all the fan favorite characters as well as the existing roster of Mortal Kombat 3 and it saved the day. But next up, we gotta talk about Mortal Kombat 2. To this day, many people believe this is the best sequel in Mortal Kombat history, alright? It brought in so many new characters, but also included a lot of the fan favorite characters from the previous game. People love Mortal Kombat 2. Mortal Kombat 3 was terrible, and they went back to play this game. So that's how good Mortal Kombat 2 was. But of course, we have to include the original Mortal Kombat game. The roster is tiny, to be sure, but every character in this game was beloved, so much so that if they're left out in a new Mortal Kombat game, people get up set. You can't skip over Kano. You can't skip over Sonya. You just can't do it. All the ninja characters, Johnny Cage, they have to be in the game or fans are going to get upset because that's how solid this roster was. You had the supernatural characters. You had the regular martial artists. It was an awesome mix of characters. Okay, but next up, it's time for a hot take because it wouldn't be an underdog tier list without one. I believe that Mortal Kombat 1 is going to have one of the most iconic rosters in the Mortal Kombat series history. And that's because I've seen the leaks. But then on top of that, the DLC characters alone are incredible. Omni-Man, Homelander, Peacemaker, are you kidding me? Tons of 3D era characters have returned for the first time in like a decade or so, so that's awesome too. And even though I acknowledge that plenty of players hate the cameo system, technically those characters are still in the game, so I have to add them as part of the roster. I understand that Mortal Kombat 1 can be a divisive game, but I'm just saying when it comes to rosters, it's got pretty much everybody, and the characters that are on the way is gonna make the game even more memorable. I think that much like the 3D era games, people are going to grow and love this roster. It's gonna age like fine wine, I think. But all right, next up, it's time for the good tier. First up, we have Mortal Kombat 11. When this game first came out, people hated the roster. Very similar 
similar to Mortal Kombat X, but then as time went on with the DLC characters, we got some more fan favorites returning, and also some really beloved guest characters that people loved as well, so overall as a complete package, people really do like the roster, they don't think it's amazing, but I think most people agree it's a good roster. So next up, let's talk about Mortal Kombat X. Just like Mortal Kombat 11, people were hating on this game when it first dropped because of the roster. A lot of the fan favorite characters had been replaced by the combat kids, or at the very least, the combat kids were taking up slots of other fan favorite characters that people wanted instead, right? But once again, the DLC kinda saved the day. We got Tanya, Trimmer, Predator, Alien, Leatherface, so many awesome DLC characters. Then on top of that, on the base roster, we had Shinnok and Goro, characters that had not been playable in a really long time, so overall, the roster is good. So next up, let's talk about Mortal Kombat Gold. Listen, okay, I know plenty of you watching are Zoomers, okay? You're young. So let me explain what Mortal Kombat Gold even is. This is basically Mortal Kombat 4, but they added way more characters, which made the roster actually pretty decent. I think the roster for Mortal Kombat Gold is very solid, which is impressive because it came after Mortal Kombat 4, which was also a very divisive game because it broke away from the pixel graphics and went full on 3D, and as a result, looked a little bit goofy. Oh boy, but next up comes a really tough decision for me personally, Deception and Deadly Alliance. Both of these games, over time, are considered to have decent rosters, but they also have things that make people upset about them too, so it's tough to make my decision. On the one hand, Deception is a bigger roster, so in that regard it wins, just more playable characters overall. However, at the same time, this game was canon after the events of Deadly Alliance, and as a result, a lot of fan favorite characters were dead and not playable in the game. So no Sonya. No Jax. You get the idea, right? No Reptile either. No Cyrax, no Quan Chi, no Shang Tsung. They died in the intro. You get the idea, right? The roster is pretty big to be sure, but that entire bottom row is pretty much brand new characters who for years afterwards were mocked for being unoriginal and just not that interesting. Now fast forward to the present and people actually like these characters, but at the time, they did not. And also, why is Bo Rai Cho here? I understand Bo Rai Cho didn't die, but come on, you couldn't find somebody better to replace Bo Rai Cho? Anyway, you get what I'm saying. Today, Deception is beloved, but back then at the time, man, it was divisive. Kind of similar to Mortal Kombat 3, whereas Deadly Alliance is pretty much beloved by everybody. I don't think anyone hated the roster. Yeah, it was kind of small, but it was also a return to form and kind of refreshing overall. So most people at the time preferred Deadly Alliance. So should I put it in front? because people like the roster more? Or should I put it behind because it has way less characters than Deception? I'm gonna go with my gut and just put Deadly Alliance down here, only because Deception has aged like fine wine, and now people actually love it. But okay, next up, it's time for another hot take, Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe. Yes, I know plenty of people hate this game, especially people that never played it, because it doesn't have the fatalities, and why am I sharing the roster with DC characters? But for its time, looking back on it, I think the developers did a pretty good job with their selection. The DC side pretty much has everybody you could want, and the Mortal Kombat side also has pretty much everybody you could want. And Kano. Sorry, I'm a known Kano hater. He's not a bad character, I would just prefer pretty much anybody else over him. But I digress. Overall, I think the roster is pretty good. Maybe you could replace Catwoman with somebody more iconic, but I think for the story to make sense, the writers wanted somebody shifty and untrustworthy on the DC side, and that's why they did Catwoman. They wanted someone who could play for both teams, in other words. So yeah, overall, the roster in Mortal Kombat vs. DC is pretty good, and on a personal note, the costumes are also pretty cool for a lot of characters as well. But then we have Shaolin Monks. Yeah, for anyone who never played this game, you can actually unlock other characters to play as, and let me put it up on screen because there is a shockingly high amount of characters to play in this game that's not really meant to be a fighting game. It's meant to be a beat-em-up, right? Like a co-op beat-em-up. And yet, even so, look at all the different characters you can play as. It's kind of crazy, right? So Shaolin Monks actually has a decent roster. It's only 
only sin is being small compared to everyone else, but that's because every other game on this list is a fighting game where a roster is like the main point. And honestly, one of the coolest parts about Shaolin Monks is that when you verse each other, it's way different than any other Mortal Kombat game you can play. But then finally, in last place, we have Mortal Kombat 4. This game blew my mind because I was a kid, but I imagine if you were an adult, you weren't that impressed by the 3D graphics because it was a first attempt, and then on top of that, the roster was quite tiny, I imagine because the developer team were still trying to figure out how to make the polygons even work, right? So no reason to make a massive roster if you can't get the base characters to function correctly, and that's why at first the roster was so small, and also some of the characters just sucked. We don't have Kano, instead we have Jarek, you know, stuff like that. Some big misses on the roster, but overall, no, it's bad. It's a bad roster, but that's okay because we got gold later. Oh boy, but now we have the bottom tier, the final row, the bruh tier. These games either completely missed the mark or they're just not fighting games, so their roster is not that big. I wanted to include spinoffs in this video, so here we go. Mortal Kombat 3. Hands down, most people will tell you it's the worst roster in Mortal Kombat history, and that's because Midway was going through a lawsuit at the time, and they could not include a lot of characters that they wanted to, which means as a result, a lot of fan favorite characters were missing. But as mentioned earlier, eventually we did get Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 to save the day. Behind this game, we have Mythology Sub-Zero because you can only play as one character, and he's the best character. Sub-Zero is my personal favorite character in the series, but you can only play as one guy. Behind that, we have Special Forces, which like 90% of players have never even touched. It's like mythologies, but you can only play as Jax. I love Jax, but he's not nearly as popular as Sub-Zero. And then yeah, that's actually it, because the other games here are just the same games, but on different console ports, so I'm not gonna count them. So there you have it, everyone. The best and worst rosters in Mortal Kombat history. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, because I love making these videos interactive. And then while you're down there, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. It helps my channel out a ton. And then finish that combo by subscribing and ringing that bell so you never miss any future videos. Make sure to come back next time, and as always, stay underdogs!